Welcome back to a new video. Today's gun guide is about the ACWR, one of my favorite guns in Call of Duty and older Battlefield games, but sadly not in 2042. So I originally wanted to record like the gun guide after I played the gun a bit, but uh, I had other things to do and I think this was good because my experience with the gun was so bad, I almost wanted to just cancel the review, do something else, make a review for like the AK-12 or something, but yeah, here I am. So before I go into numbers or not, I have to say I will review the gun based on my experience and, and on the statistics that the gun really have. So what do I mean by this? My experience with the gun was really bad. I didn't enjoy it. I had absolutely no fun at all, but I searched through the internet a bit, found a very detailed page with gun statistics, and I also went in game and tested the gun, and based on its Statistics, the gun is really good. Based on my experience with the gun, I would absolutely burn the gun. Like, personally, if I just made the review based on my experience, I probably would have thrown the gun in the trash, but now that I look at the numbers, tested the numbers in game to figure out if they're accurate or not, I have to say the gun is actually really good based on its numbers, but yeah. I will talk more about this when we get into the statistics, so let's do that right now. So in terms of ammo, we get the usual just standard issue and standard issue extended max since it's a portal gun. And we basically do 28 damage up to 50 meters, 26 damage between 15 and 20 meters, and after 20 meters up to 70 meters we did 22 damage with the gun. So what does this mean for our TTK? Our TTK is 244 milliseconds up to 19 meters, what is very competitive. And after 19 meters up to 17 meters it's 326 milliseconds what is still a very good TTK and after 70 meters you kill in 400 milliseconds but you probably won't use the gun at this range. So as for armor if the enemy wears armor our TTK increases up to 326 milliseconds to like 20 meters and after 20 meters if the enemy wears armor and you only body shoot him you have a TTK of 400 milliseconds what is extremely slow. What makes the gun even better? It's its headshot multiplayer. We get the usual 2.15 for the head, but with its damage numbers this means not only does one headshot always shave off one bullet from your time to kill, but up to 19 meters you can two tap somebody in the head with its 28 bullet damage up to 15 meters. You do 60 damage per headshot, meaning two bullets to the head deal a total damage of 120, instantly killing the enemy. And even with its 26 damage between 15 and 90 meters, you still do, I think, 52 and something damage. So it's still enough to two tap somebody to the head, especially since armor no longer covers the whole body, but only the chest. So if you use the gun, go for headshots. You will be rewarded heavily. And even on long range with its 22 damage, if you hit one headshot on range, your TT TK goes down from 326 milliseconds if they don't wear armor down to 244 milliseconds since you need one bullet less. So the gun is a real headshot machine. All of this comes packaged with a fire rate of 735 rounds per minute meaning the gun is not so slow that you get punished a lot when you miss a shot but it's also not that fast that if you miss a shot it doesn't really matter so it's somewhere in between you should land your shots but especially in range if you miss like one shot i don't think it's quite a problem you also get a decent reload speed but if i read this right the funny part with the gun is if you shoot the gun empty your reload is faster than if you do a tactical reload so if you have the chance literally completely empty the mag and do a full reload because it's faster than if you just leave one or two bullets in the magazine and reload. Adding to this, it's a nice low recoil that you can make even lower with attachments, but the only problem here is its accuracy. I think especially on range the gun's accuracy is very bad, but that's not a problem since we can just slap on to recoil control attachments and use it as a close quarters gun where it's obviously intended to perform very well. So let's go over the attachments real quick. So you probably know the drill by now as a side fusion holo. It's an aggressive gun. We want the one times. So it's the fusion holo. Any other one times is also fine. As always, sides are personal preference. I like the fusion holo, so that's what I'm going with. For magazines, we only have two options, standard issue and standard issue extended. Obviously, mo the more bullets, the better. So we use the extended in the first spot and the standard issue in the second spot. Also, those numbers are half correct, half wrong. The standard issue only has 26 rounds, but the standard issue extended has 40 rounds. As for our muzzle, I would recommend the war compensator since you want to play aggressive and you want to land those headshots so less recoil is always better but I haven't unlocked this yet 
but if I had this would be what I will be using since the loss of on weapon accuracy isn't really important close up but the recoil control is important so war compensator first spot and rep suppressor in the second spot as always and then for our underbarrel we actually want the STNR laser sight for even more recoil control and hip fire on this gun is also quite good so yeah these are all the attachments for the gun and as for our loadout generally speaking you want to use this gun aggressive so all the characters that are in close proximity to the enemy usually meaning all the assaults are fine and supports are also fine you could also put it on an engineer but engineer usually are slightly further away since they usually are on tanks and vehicles and stuff so yeah the only class i wouldn't recommend this gun on is the Reacon since the Reacon usually stays even further back than the rest and since the gun isn't performing that well over range just use it on any assault any engineer or support and you're good to go for the rest of the loadout personal choice i like the desert eagle as my secondary and as gadget i like c5 when i play a more close quarters map like redacted or there are a lot of tanks and if there the map isn't really close quarters or there are a lot of tanks i like to use the sph explosive launcher and of course for grenades always use smoke grenades so now my closing thoughts on the gun should you use the acwr well i would say yes play it a little bit see how it feels for you for me personally i won't be playing the gun again any time soon but that's not because it's a bad gun it's just that i can't perform well with the gun so i rather play other guns like the ak-12 for example performs around the same but for me i get more kills when i play the ak-12 compared to the acwr so that's for me but for you it might be different just take the gun with you play it a little bit you might need to unlock one or two attachments depending on how far you got with the gun already and then use it on breakthrough use it on conquest see how it goes and then you can decide as i said i won't be using it but just because i don't like it and i don't use it doesn't mean the gun is bad or unusable or you shouldn't use it so test it out and see how it goes for you well anyways that's all from me today if you enjoyed the video consider leaving a like and subscribing for future content thank you very much for watching and i will see you in the next one